dissertation called, which is Raspberry Tech Orchestral Company. I will start by giving you some background information about early brass chamber music in America, starting in 1900, talking about the early pioneers of the brass quintet, and concluding with Corel Bruce's biography, background, and a performance practice of his concerto for brass quintet in strings and or, or, and or piano. When compared to other genres, chamber music was truly the final frontier of music. <laughs> Strike that. When compared to other genres, chamber music was truly the final frontier of artistic brass playing in terms of repertoire and status. There are many factors that have led to the rise in popularity of the modern brass quintet and repertoire. The evolution of fine tuned brass instruments has given rise to artistry on the five instruments that make up the brass quintet usually two trumpets, horn, trombone, and bass trombone or tuba. The early brass quintets successively inspired other brass players to form brass quintets and composers to write music for the ensemble. Prior to World War II, 1939, the main work of brass chamber music was a brass trio by Francis Poulon, titled Sonata for Horn, Trumpet, and Trombone. While five-part music for brass instruments has been performed for centuries, what is considered the brass quintet today became a viable chamber ensemble post-World War II. Around 1950, there was significant growth of public school instrumental music departments in America, as well as growth of the music industry. And these factors contributed to the formation of brass ensembles. Evidence seems to indicate that the brass quintet was an American creation. It is important to consider that some brass quintet pieces in the standard repertoire had been written much earlier. For instance, Victor Ewald's quintets were composed from 1888 to 1912. However, overall, the genre of brass quintet is considered a post-World War II ensemble. To make a case for the ensemble's existence preceding 1950, compositions for the ensemble, the existence of both professional and amateur ensembles, and the instrumentation for the ensemble would have had to remain constant for a sustained period of time before 1950. The brass quintet was not conceived as a formal chamber music ensemble prior to 1950. The New York Brass Quintet is largely responsible for establishing the instrumentation of today's Brass Quintet. The Brass Quintet, from its inception, performed transcriptions of earlier music and original contemporary compositions. Robert King was responsible for the evolution of brass chamber music. Starting in 1936, he began to arrange and publish transcriptions that facilitated the growth of brass chamber music. The New York Brass Quintet depended on Robert King's music for early brass quintet performance as they performed hundreds of concerts for young audience incorporation school and outreach program. This early ensemble pioneered their way into towns and schools, introducing this unknown chamber ensemble and music to thousands of people. The quintet performed so often together as part of the young audience incorporation that they decided to start performing concerts on their own aside from the young artists. Young Audience Incorporation. Composers started writing works for this new chamber ensemble immediately. Because of the quintet's popularity, other brass quintets were inspired to form. The excitement and popularity of this new chamber ensemble resulted in the repertoire growing exponentially over the period of the next 30 years. Now, 62 years from the formation of the modern brass quintet, there is a great quantity of repertoire. Many compositions were com commissioned and or written for specific groups like the New York Brass Quintet, the American Brass Quintet, and the Annapolis Brass Quintet. Interestingly enough, there were also compositions composed as early as 1960 for Brass Quintet with orchestral accompaniment. Today, most colleges and universities have a faculty brass quintet as well as amateur and professional groups in most cities. We can all be thankful to the New York Brass Quintet, American Brass Quintet, and the Annapolis Brass Quintet the early and persistent pioneers of brass chamber music for the growth of literature and also the popularity and appreciation of the brass quintet as a chamber ensemble. We'll take a look at the early brass quintets. The early brass quintet, early brass quintets were the New York brass quintet, the American brass quintet, the Annapolis brass quintet. And what these groups had in common is that each approached the brass quintet as a serious chamber ensemble. Their goal was to create a professional brass quintet based on the model of a successful professional string quartet. Each of these groups commissioned works from composers to make significant contributions to the brass quintet repertoire. 
Each group also toured the world performing concerts to bring appreciation to the brass chambers. Other brass quintets and ensembles that have consistently remained devoted to enlarging the repertoire include the Philip Jones Brass Ensemble, Canadian Brass, and the Chestnut Brass Company. The New York Brass Quintet was the first professional brass quintet, formally organized in the spring of 1954. The founding members of the New York Brass Quintet were Robert Nagel and John Gossel on trumpets, Frederick Schmidt on horn, Erwin Price trombone, and Harvey Phillips tuba. In 1954, young audiences incorporated sought a brass ensemble to supplement the string and woodwind groups under its sponsorship. The New York Brass Quintet joined up with the New York Woodwind Quintet and the Juilliard Quartet for these outreach programs. Most of the music was researched and adapted to modern brass instruments by Robert King for these concerts. The bulk of their repertoire was from the Renaissance period, the 16th century, with transcriptions of the Baroque period, the late 17th to early 18th centuries. Their commitment to school demonstration concerts for audience, uh, young audience incorporation often required quintet members to sacrifice higher paying freelance recordings and concerts. Nevertheless, gratification came with a positive response from the teachers and the students that experienced these performances. As composers became aware of this new ensemble, brass quintet compositions started to materialize. In addition to their estimated 500 public school concerts over four and a half years, the quintet released their first recording in 1958, titled New York Brass Quintet Presents Two Contemporary Composers. A trickle of new works became a flood as the New York Brass Quintet and composers sought each other out and formed alliances for producing concert opportunities. The New York Brass Quintet had developed two primary goals moving forward. The first was to develop an audience for the Brass Quintet through performing, and the second was to increase the repertoire for the ensemble. This resulted in the New York Brass Quintet seeking management. Ermine Kahn managed them for three seasons, and then Columbia, Columbia Artists Incorporation took over in 1960. Influence from Robert King helped the members of the New York Brass Quintet develop two music publishing companies, Mentor Music Incorporated and Chamber Music Library, which published transcriptions and new compositions for the Brass Quintet. The New York Brass Quintet began touring the United States in 1960 and Europe in 1963. They toured understanding that they were introducing audiences to a brand new chamber music genre for the first time. Trumper Robert Nagel summarizes the early European tours as unusual. We would present an unfamiliar repertoire in a new style by the first brass quintet to tour Europe, interpreting chamber music to people of different national cultures. He said what made the tours unusual were the audiences. He said the audiences ranged from teenagers and on to select audiences made up largely of other brass players, conductors, composers, publishers, concert managers, and leading music critics. Important results of these tours included inspiring the formation of a quintet within the Philip Jones Brass Ensemble and motivating prominent European composers to write new pieces for the brass quintet. Composers such as Sir Milka Marlon, Eugene Bolta, Henri Sabu, and Von Humboldt. The New York Brass Quintet disbanded in 1984. After 31 years, the group felt that they had accomplished their artistic goals by extensive tours, recording, and the development of the brass quintet literature. The American Brass Quintet was formed in 1960 and distinguished itself from the New York Brass Quintet by featuring instrumentation with the bass trombone rather than the tuba. They said, we decided to use bass trombone in the ensemble makeup because we felt that the sound of the tuba was too overwhelmingly for the chamber, for chamber music. This, along with the aim of the group to extensively perform early music written for uh, cornetti and sackbuts, led to the choice of the bass trombone, as it provided a more historically accurate timbre. After a decision to not perform transcriptions, they have continuous, continued to exclusively perform art music, spanning from the Renaissance and the Baroque eras to modern compositions written exclusively for them, most notably compositions by Eric Wazen. The group is still touring and performing throughout the world after 56 years. There were two key elements that propelled the American brass quintet to prominence as a brass chamber ensemble. The chamber the, the group began a summer residency in 1967 at the Aspen Music Festival as artists in residence 
And also in 1987, when the group was hired as artists in residence at the Juilliard School, overseeing the Brass Chamber Music Program. Both residencies provided the American Brass Quintet an opportunity to influence young professionals, not only in the chamber music world, but in the world more generally. Throughout the quintet's history, the group has remained faithful to its original goals, fostering good contemporary music and presenting early music according to current knowledge of proper performance practice. To date, the Brass Quintet has commissioned over 100 works for Brass Quintet. To summarize, the New York Brass Quintet and the American Brass Quintet were pioneers in the development and acceptance of the Brass Quintet as a chamber music ensemble. Both have commissioned, premiered, and recorded a large part of the standard 20th century repertoire. They were the first professional brass quintet in the world that understand, understood the importance of raising the artistic profile of brass artistry. This required them to seek out composers to create compositions that would generate enough of a quality repertoire to equal that of other ensembles. To their credit, many feel that the brass quintet has become an equal to woodwind quintet and string quartet in chamber music today. Looking at the, uh, my topic of the dissertation, the survey of works for brass quintet for orchestra accompaniment, um, I think it's interesting enough to me and this discussion, a genre of music was being composed as early as 1960 when the formation of the brass quintets began. Um, up until now, there has been no research on brass quintet with orchestra accompaniment. In a, in a few moments, you'll hear a performance of Carol Hoos's and share for brass quartet and string orchestra or piano. And today's performance will be with piano. Um, first, some background, re, uh, background on my research of brass quartet with orchestral accompaniment. Surprisingly, there are 57 works for brass quartet with orchestral accompaniment. And this has been found through searching the internet, music catalogs, reviews, and recordings. The genre of brass quartet with orchestral accompaniment has not been researched on a scholarly level that I've discovered. There is a lack of recording of, of these works. While there are existing pieces in the literature, there also seems to be a resurgence of new compositions being written for this genre. The purpose of this study is to not only bring to light the amount of existing literature for the brass quintet with orchestral accompaniment, but to encourage and propel future, future performances and recordings of the literature. Carol Husa was born in Prague in Czechoslovakia on August 7, 1921. The beginning of Rusa's musical career coincided with the Nazi takeover of Czechoslovakia on November 18, 1939. He was forced out of an engineering program that was shut down by the Nazis and would end up in the Prague Conservatory. Rusa studied composition and conducting. He did so well, he won an award that enabled him to go to France for additional work with Arthur Aniger, Nadia Boulanger, and André Pluton. These studies in France counted towards his advanced degree at the Prague Academy of Music, and he, he finished his degree in the summer of 1947. Husson may have anticipated living happily ever after at this point, but political circumstances dictated otherwise. 1948 was the last time Husa was allowed in Czechoslovakia. When the communists took control of the government, Husa, his music, and other avant-garde artists were banned. As a result, he remained in France, where he found the love of his life, advanced his career as a composer and conductor, and began gaining recognition in musical circles. In 1954, an opportunity came to move to the United States and teach at Cornell University, and Husa made the decision to immigrate. He became an American citizen in 1959. He quickly established himself in the American musical environment, Within several years, he had conducted major orchestras, including the Rochester Philharmonic, Buffalo Philharmonic, Louisville Orchestra, Baltimore Symphony, Cincinnati Symphony, Boston Philharmonia, New York Philharmonic, as well as ensembles at, at prestigious conservatories and universities, including Harvard, Eastman, Peabody, and New England Conservatory. Who's moved around, and, and, and that enabled him to witness firsthand the evolution of musical styles in Central and Western Europe, as well as the United States. It also put him in touch with leading performers, ensembles, and publishers around the world. Who's celebrated his 90th birthday in 2011 and currently lives in North Carolina. He donated his personal library 
to the School of Music at Ithaca College on September 28, 2000. Proust is probably best known for his work, Music for Prague, written in 1968, a work in memory of the 1968 Soviet bloc invasion of Czechoslovakia. His string quartet number no. three won the Pulitzer Prize in 1969. Proust is also also, in 1993, the recipient of the Grawmeyer Award for Music Composition presented by the University of Louisville for his concerto for cello and orchestra. Among numerous honors, Kusa has received a fellowship from the Guggenheim Foundation, awards from the Academy, American Academy of Arts and Letters, the National Endowment for the Arts, Kusavitsky Foundation Commissions, the Czech Academy for the Arts and Sciences Prize, the Czech Medal of Merit, the first class, from the President uh, Bakalov Havan and the Lily Boulanger Award. Um, I'm going to start talking a little bit about the history of the concerto for brass quintet and strings or piano. That occurred when the New York Brass Quintet visited Cornell campus to perform Gunther Schubert's dictate. There, they spoke to Husa in the hopes that he would write a spe uh, piece specifically for them for an upcoming European tour. Husa agreed and wrote the three movement concerto. However, the projected tour never occurred. Fortunately, one of Husa's acquaintances, Lucas Foss, heard about the piece and wanted to arrange a performance of the work. When Foss began working on it at the Buffalo Philharmonic, he hired some brass players who had a problem performing the work. Distraught, he called Russo to relate the news. Fortunately, Richard Pittman, the orchestra conductor of the New England Conservatory, and Frank Bautista, the band director there, had planned a conference of several days' duration, which included Russo's concerto. For that performance, the student brass quintet were the soloists. Russo suggested that Foss contact and engage the New England Conservatory brass quintet for the performance. Foss did, and the performance with the Buffalo Philharmonic, which was the official premiere, took place in February 15, 1970, five years after the piece was completed. On December 16th of that year, Husa conducted a program of his own work with the New England Conservatory Brass Quintet and the Cornell Symphony Orchestra in a program commemorating Beethoven's 200th birthday. It was reviewed that evening by Neil O'Loughlin, in which he writes, Rob Luce's 25-minute three-movement concerto for brass quintet and string orchestra or piano is an impressive extended work that makes much of its impact by dramatic contrast. Clearly, the composer thinks in tonal terms, but takes particular de delight in bitonal clashes and false relations. The handling of the solo group is bold and idiomatic, but some of the difficulties encountered would effectively preclude performance by all but very skilled players. The work has since not been performed or recorded, and today we will be performing works in sections and giving a performance practice of the work for better understanding of who's is writing for the brass quintet. A descriptive analysis of the concerto, um, the work is scored for two trumpets, horn, trombone, tuba, and string orchestra or piano. Mark Rodis, author of Carol, Carol Hoos's A Composer's Life in Essays and Documents, has this to say about the concerto for brass quintet and string orchestra. The three movements of the concerto for brass quintet are titled Quasi Fanfare, Mysterioso, and Adagio. The first movement arrests the listener's attention with incisive rhythms and rapidly reiterating motives in the brass, which unfold over sustained tones in the orchestral voices. Chromatic seconds are conspicuous in the harmonies. In the second movement, Husa employs a conventional ABA solo form. The outer sections are transparent in texture with intricate, highly ornamented figures that appear in widely spaced limitations. The sections contrast with the central portion of the movement, which uses many of these motives simultaneously within a homophonic texture. The adagio opening of the, of the, the finale is really a prelude of sorts, which leads to an allegretto that is again a song form. The outer sections frame a contrasting and quite relaxed central portion. This design seems to have been practical layout employed for the purpose of affording the brass players a rest before launching into the final section, which he calls a virtual farkas of sound. 
There is extreme rhythmical complexity throughout the entire piece for both the solo ensemble and the accompaniment. Two accompaniments are available with the string orchestra or with the piano. The string parts are rental only through the Duke Music. The quintet and piano edition can be purchased through Robert King Music. The string accompaniment is in treaty. Pussy uses every extended technique available for the string instruments, which adds a, a tempo difference that cannot be achieved on the piano. Pussy uses the accompaniment as a supportive texture mostly throughout the work. There is only one moment in the third movement where there is a unification in rhythm and pitch between the brass quintet and the accompaniment, and that is only for 10 measures. And it takes place in the opening adagio. So at this point, I'm going to ask my quintet to come up on stage. And we'll get into the first movement. consisting of the notes C-sharp, E, E-sharp. The opening section includes three measures after letter B with a fermata, after a flourish, which consists of multiple rhythms. This opening was perhaps the easiest section to put together in the whole piece. Performance practice ideas we used to put this section together were using slower tempos, grouping instruments with light rhythms, and measure-by-measure -measure practice. So we will take an A and we will perform that. Thank 
Moving on to the third movement. The final movement begins with an adagio. The opening is where we find the only unification in the brass quartet and accompaniment playing together for nine measures. The brass, all its straight beats for this opening, and it's more of a corral. There is a jolting duet in the trumpet parts, which stands out from the writing in this section and ends with six tuplet figures, much like the first movement had similar endings. The final three measures of this first section can be heard compositionally as an anticipation to what is coming in the next 6 8 section in the piano accompaniment, but in reminisce, but reminiscent of what just happened in the opening of the third movement in the brass quintet.
Alberto Sisi uses harmonies in the trumpets and trombone, and straight mute in the horn and two. The Alberto is highly rhythmic with running slurred 16 notes in most of the quartet parts, in sparse use of piano accompaniment. The 6 8 is a song form, and it just so happens Fusa divides it up into three sections by use of meters. We will only perform the first two portions as it's basically the same writing, um, but it uses a different meter to um, And this gives you a great idea of what he's doing. And, and it, it, he's something he keeps coming back with always is this running, unified scale in your line. It's either ascending or descending at the same time in the quartet. And that's how he kind of you can listen to that as an uh, opening and closing uh, of uh, his sections.
brings back the material from the end of the first movement, with very unified rhythm and a strong sense of the half-step chromaticism.